Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to part four of my Alchemy Synthesizer tutorial series in Logic Pro 10. In this video, we'll take a look at using the MSEG envelope, uh, MSEG envelope, as well as the mod map as modulation sources. So let's first, uh, let's look at the MSEG envelope. Um, MSEG, I'm assuming, stands for something like multi-stage envelope gen generator or maybe multi-segment envelope generator because it functions a lot like a regular uh, ADSR, AHDSR envelope, but you can create um, basically as many stages as you want. So you're, you're not limited to the, the typical, you know, four stages uh, that you see in most envelopes. And then, you know, again, in, in Alchemy, there's, there was an additional hold stage of so five stages. So the cool thing about the MSEG envelope is it's a multi-segment or a multi-stage envelope. So you can just keep creating stages as you see fit. Um, you can also loop uh, certain stages, almost like looping in a sampler, but we're looping the envelopes. You can choose a loop range, uh, which is really cool as well. And just like with the uh, AHDSR, we can also synchronize it to the beat clock, and we can synchronize our points uh, and our segments or our stages uh, to basically musical values as opposed to just seconds or milliseconds. All right, so let's first, let me just reset this to the stock setting. I'm just going to create a, just a sort of a stock sawtooth pad sound. I'm just going to detune A and B. I'll change this to maybe something else. We'll go with the big and dirty. Maybe on C we'll turn on, I don't know, let's go with the, with that. Detune it a bit. Let's add a little noise. I really like the fire noise. So let's use the fire noise. And we'll just cut the low frequencies out. And let's see what that sounds like. It's a little loud there. I just pull down the volume on the saws. There we go. Let me just soften up my main uh, volume envelope just a touch. There we go. All right, cool. So we got like, just a basic uh, sawtooth pad. Um, let's modulate the filter cutoff. This is a low pass filter. Let's modulate this filter with the MSEG envelope. So let's click on the uh, cutoff knob, go down to the modulation router, turn that on and choose MSEG envelope and we'll use MSEG one. And just like, you know, like just like I said before, just like a, another, any other envelope, you can, you can create just a regular four stage envelope. It'll follow that. Let me pull the cutoff down to a starting point. But you can create more points than you normally could in, in a regular envelope. So the way, the two ways you can create points um, stages in the MSEG envelope is you can just click right on the line somewhere and you can also right click anywhere and it'll create different stages. So you can create some sort of, you know, crazy, crazy motion like this if you want. And then you can grab these, you can move them left and right to adjust the timing. Now, uh, right now in the default setting, um, this little, these little arrows here are sort of serving as a sustain point. So as long as you hold the key, it'll stop at, uh, at, the, at that sustain point. But when you grab them and pull them apart, you'll actually see they're more than that. They're actually a loop range. So as long as you hold the key down, at least uh, as long as your loop mode is in sustain, it'll loop that section. But if you just place this somewhere, it will actually hold it as a sustain point. Another thing I forgot to show in the uh, the previous video uh, when we were talking about the the regular ADSR envelope is that you can actually grab each of the the um, the transition between the stages and you can actually curve it to be logarithmic or linear. So you can actually adjust uh, the sort of the effect of the motion a bit. Uh, if you want. All 
All right, uh, let's try syncing this to the clock. Um, first of all, I'm gonna hit file, I'm gonna hit clear, we're gonna start over. Um, if you wanna sync this to your tempo, you just click on the sync button, and these lines become, uh, basically they're quarter notes. So this is like two full measures of music here. Actually, take it back, it's two beats, these are 16th notes. Um, so it, it, again, it synchronizes to the, the clock of your, uh, of your MIDI clock, so you end up, having no matter what, what tempo you have, it will synchronize this motion to the tempo of your session. So these are the lines are 16th notes. So let's, um, let's do something like this. I'm gonna pull this down, I right click up here again. Let's create sort of like a rhythm. And let's go up here. Again, I'm right clicking to create new points. Let's try that. Let's pull this over. And it'll actually snap to the grid too. Yeah, let's do like that. So it's kind of cool. You can create rhythmic motives. Um, and since my cutoff is a really hard cutoff, um, it's basically gating most of the signal, but not all of the signal. So it's a little bit different than, than say, modulating uh, the master volume control. Now, just a note on when you use the MSEG envelope on the master volume. Uh, let me turn it off on the cutoff just for now. We'll come back to that, though, in a second. Um, if you use the master volume with the MSEG, you have to make sure that you s still keep your AHDSR on there for volume control because there's gonna be some situations where if you don't put that on there, the MSEG uh, generator is just gonna loop continuously until you hit spacebar, it'll never end because there's no release time in a volume envelope to tell it to stop. So just again, when you, when you modulate volume, make sure that you keep your AHDSR uh, modulation on there and just add MSEG to it. So let's try this with volume now. Now what you can do is you can use the volume, um, the volume effect. Let me pull the depth, um, pull the depth down just a little bit so it's not so hard. There you go. And you can blend that with another MSEG envelope, maybe with the filter here. So let's turn this one back on and let's make this one go to MSEG2. And on this one, I'm gonna sync it but I'm gonna create sort of like a 16th note motion. Oop, there we go. Pull that down. And then what I'll do is I'll just loop just that first section there. Uh, another thing you can do is you can drag over these points just like so. And you can uh, you can hit delete. And it should delete them. Oh, I guess not. Okay. Well, there we go. I just right clicked them to get rid of them. So there's just my my little sixteenth uh, note idea. Oh, let me put one more right here. There we go. So there's my new idea. So it automatically adjusts the width of the of the screen. Let's make the uh, the volume one. Let's make uh, MSEG one repeat as well. I'll tell you what we'll do is we will take. We're gonna create another point and we'll drag it over here, and we will pull this up, just like so, and we'll loop all of this. Is what we'll do. There we go. So 
So we can create cool, like sort of moving rhythmic, uh, rhythmic sounds, uh, similar that we, that you know, like we did in the sequencer, but we're doing it with an envelope this time. All right. Um, in addition to this, uh, the sync option, there's also a trigger option. Let me just turn off the, the filter one, just so we can hear one right now. I'll go back to number one. There we go. Um, if you turn trigger on, like it is now, let me pull the cutoff up. There we go. In trigger mode, every time you press the key, it restarts the envelope. So every time I press the key, it restarts the envelope, re-triggers the envelope. If you turn the trigger off, it's just going to play um, syncing to the beat clock, syncing to the tempo of your session. And no matter where you come in at, you're, you're coming in at a specific point of the, the envelope. So the key press, your key press doesn't determine when the envelope starts. So it doesn't matter when I press the key, the envelope's just going to keep uh, rolling away uh, like it is now. Okay, there are also some cool preset settings um, that are, are pretty useful. Uh, let's try the bouncing ball setting. Um, I'm going to use this to demonstrate the loop, the different loop modes. So first, I'm going to turn the loop off. And by the way, I'm modulating the cutoff again, but not the, not the master volume, just the cutoff. Um, and it sounds like this. So when you have loop mode set to off, once the envelope ends, it just continues on at whatever the, the base bottom value is. When you put this on one of the other loop modes, you'll see that basically the, the envelope will loop forward or sometimes forward and backward between these two, uh, this loop range. So I can just, what I'm doing is setting the loop range to be the full length of the envelope. And if I put this on continuous, Watch what happens. Uh, now, sustain does the same thing. Both of those are forward loops. The difference is that when you let go of the key on continuous, the envelope continues along. When you let go of the key on sustain, the envelope jumps over here, it jumps to the end of the envelope. Um, now this is really only really noticeable when you go to your main volume envelope and you draw out the release time. Because then what happens is on continuous mode, I can play like a chord and just maybe play the chord really quickly, but the chord will still sort of ring out on the release. On sustain mode, it won't do that. It'll, if I just tap the key, I'll just get a little bit of this very first little peak and then it'll jump to the end. So I find continuous mode to be a little bit more musically useful. And there's also forward and back where it plays the, uh, the loop forward and then backward. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, remember when you use these loop modes, you can set the loop range to be really whatever you want it to be. So if I just want to loop, you know, if I just want to loop this area right here, if like I want this to, to sort of come down and then just cycle this section, you can do that. Or maybe just on one of the forward modes. flam out of there, you can put this on trigger mode instead of on, uh, on, or you can turn off trigger mode. The problem is when you release the key quick, quickly, if the, um, uh, if the release isn't quick enough and the release overlaps the next attack, that you play, it won't restart the entire envelope. It'll just sort of keep the looped section going on. 
Now there's also three edit modes for uh, the MSEG envelope. Uh, normal, basically when you, when you grab a point and you move it around, it has no effect or no bearing on any of the other points around it. If you use slide, it'll actually move um, the, the other points down or move them up depending on uh, how you edit it. So it does have a bearing on, on things behind it. And then if you use stretch, it'll actually uh, sort of give you this accordion effect where you can sort of make things quicker on one side and slower on the other side. The MSEG envelope is really, really cool because it's, again, it functions almost like an LFO in it that it's re uh, it can repeat itself, but it gives you the freedom of sort of shaping uh, the modulation any way you want with as many stages as you want. All right, next let's talk about the mod map. Uh, the mod map doesn't show up as a typical modulation source uh, because it's actually a secondary source for modulation that you can choose uh, right here. So basically, this is the mod map selection. Um, you can choose one to choose mod map one or create another one, and you can choose two. So it's, it's very similar, like creating new ones is very similar, it's just you have to choose it as a secondary source. The reason why it's a secondary source is that the mod map doesn't directly control a modulation effect. It basically modulates a modulation. That's why it's called secondary modulation. So let me show you a really, really simple example of what the mod, mod map can do by modulating velocity with the mod map. So I'm just gonna clear the setting. Um, in the very stock setting, velocity is uh, controlling volume. So you click on the volume fader, you'll see that one of the, the things that's affecting volume is velocity. So just so you can hear this a little better, I'm gonna pull the depth all the way up, and I'm gonna choose mod map one. Now, what the mod map does is it allows you to control the output intensity of a modulation effect based on an input value. The reason why I start with velocity is because the mod map when paired with velocity is an example of what's called the velocity response curve. Um, if you have a, a linear curve like this, you know, zero is gonna result in zero and 127 is gonna result in 127. So when I play really loud, I get loud sounds. When I play soft, I get softer sounds. If I pull the mod map up so that it's more logarithmic, you end up with a velocity response curve where the volume is going to come out a bit louder because an input velocity of 60 ends up not actually being an input an output velocity of 60. An input velocity of 60 ends up being something more like 70 or 80. So it's easier to play loud even if you're touching the key softer. Likewise, if you make this an exponential curve, you get the opposite, it sort of underplays the effect. So I'm really, really gonna have to hit the keys hard to have a louder volume. I'm hitting the keys right now, I'm hardly hearing anything. Yeah, I really, really have to hit the keys hard to get any volume out of it. So it sort of exaggerates the, the lower values as opposed to exaggerating the higher values. So velocity response curves are something that have been in synthesizers for years. They're nothing, they're nothing new. Um, the cool thing about alchemy is it lets us use a, a response curve, the mod map, what they're, what they're calling it. Uh, they're allowing you to use a response curve to, con to control anything. So let's do something like a filter sweep. Let's choose the cutoff. Let's choose LFO1 as the target. So we have this basic sine wave uh, LFO sweep. If I wanna make more out of the effect, I'm going to choose the mod map, and I can pull it into the logarithmic values. It exaggerates the amount of time when the filter is open and under-exaggerates the amount of time when the filter is closed. If I go the opposite direction, it stays open for a shorter amount of time and then stays closed for a longer amount of time. Uh, let's try this to control, instead of, uh, yeah, let's try this, not, not an LFO, let's use the sequencer now. Let's set this back to linear. Again, you just option click on it. And let's create a, uh, a filter pattern here on, on our sequencer. I'll make it sort, kind of sort of rhythmic. 
with some low values and some high values. So there we go. Uh, the mod map's already chosen. Let's exaggerate this. So what this is going to do is the upper peaks are going to be further up and the lower levels are going to be are basically going to be lower. So it's going to exaggerate the upper peaks uh, the upper level uh, sounds in the uh, in the sequencer. I misspoke there. It doesn't it doesn't actually make the 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 lower levels go lower. It just pulls everything up. Likewise, if I want to make uh, you know more out of the lows, you can pull it down to be an exponential curve. So there you go. So in a nutshell, the mod map is essentially a response curve, and it's a secondary source for modulation that allows you to exa uh, exaggerate or minimize the intention, uh, the intensity of a modulation effect. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you guys that I forgot to show in the last video was that anytime, it especially helps when you're working with uh, presets. If you're not sure what modulation uh, sources and targets are being used. You can actually come down to this button that says show target. It'll actually show you every single modulation effect that's going on in the synthesizer. So if you want to sort of copy an effect or, or you know, edit an effect, you can say, oh, I want to come down here and I want to alter the filter cutoff LFO. Let's do something else. Let's make it go faster, make it go slower, put an envelope on it. So when you click on show target, it shows you every single modulation effect that has been paired up. All right, so I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. In the next episode, we will jump into using the morph pad, and then we will uh, also jump into using the arpeggiator finally, and then eventually we'll get into how to assign some of our effects up here down to our perform controls or our macro controls down here. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.